All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS DevStream. Uh, and today we are continuing our work on BXJS website. If you watched the previous videos, you know that we basically implemented search and then figured out that it was too damn slow. It was actually very choppy and not exactly nice to use. So today we're going to try to address that and uh, basically fix that and make it a lot nicer. So let me just start a server and forward the ports. So we actually have um, a proper running demo. And we're going to try and fix the current search by moving it to the service worker, sorry, web worker is what I want to say. Right. So the idea is that we're going to have a web worker that is going to perform the search and return the results to the UI component, which I think should fix it, at least make it a bit more responsive. And then um, I actually did a bit googling and found out that the fuse, the library we're using is not exactly that performance. So we might want to um, swap that for something more performant as well. But I think that's actually it's pretty good to leave it as is. Because it will allow us to actually, uh, you know, see this lagging. So I go typing, then you know, the longer the string gets, the more choppier it actually becomes. And it's like completely unresponsive right now if I just mash the keys. Yeah, that's definitely ugh, that is a big oof. Okay. So um, I guess let's just uh, go ahead and start with the search. There's also a th blah, blah, let me try that again. There's a th God, what is wrong with me? There's a second thing I want to do today. And that is optimize the data queries a bit. Because right now, um, we well, essentially, the data structure is not exactly that good. So I guess let me just zoom in a bit. Uh, so the problem is that we use the data in literally two ways, right? So we either have this page with episodes lists. And right now we literally go through all the episodes to find those episode numbers, which is uh, not exactly good, right? So this is like this could be a lot more efficient. And the other thing is that we render the episode itself, right? So we get the links from the episode and then just render it within the page. That's literally all we do, right? And the current data structure is just not helpful with that. So I would want to change that to be a bit more efficient. I guess maybe we should start with that because we would need to um, change the way the data works uh, as well for the search, right? Because we need the current data structure for search to work correctly. And then we need the other data structure for the rendering to be a bit more efficient. I don't think like, you know, the current way is probably okay ish for 100 more episodes or something, but let's just do it correct from the beginning, right? Rather than um, suffer later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this all items and I'm going to rename it to um, all search items, right? So this is going to be our search items. This is going to be different than the um, links we're going to use in GraphQL. And I'm not actually going to import them to Gatsby, but rather I'm actually going to use the FS package. And I'm going to write it to the static folder on the disk. So it's just going to be a JSON file that we're going to load within the web worker and then search over it. Right. And if as I'm just going to do write file sync is going to be very simple. And I probably need to import path as well, because we want to be nice and consistent. Right, so I'm going to import path here. And we're going to do path join. So dear name, and then it's going to be yes. So we want to put it into the what was the Gatsby static folder? Gatsby and no, not a query static. Is it just static or is it public? I don't remember. I think it's just static, right? Right. So it's just static folder. Exactly. So we are gonna actually gonna create a um, static folder over Come on, where's my folder button? There we go, static. And I'm gonna create a new dot git keep over here so that we can commit that. Right, and um, yeah, so this is gonna be static and we should just actually join that correctly. So yeah, okay, we got the static folder and then I'm gonna write it to, um, let's call it links.json, right? And we're gonna write JSON stringify all search items. So it's as simple as that we just write whatever the items is there. 
And this is one. So this is we just written the current items into the new file. Now what we need to do is we need to say all episodes, right? And I'm going to structure the episodes differently to what we did right now. Like we still need this doc ID. And I guess we don't actually need that in the case of uh, all items. So we can actually restructure that, right? Because in all items, we literally need like two things, three things, we need the file name, we need the um, data, we don't actually need a file name, we just need the episode name and URL, maybe date. So we actually can just kill majority of that in a very simple way. Okay, let's see. Uh, hey, Donna, welcome to the stream. Okay, so right, the point is, so we got the markdown, we got the documents. Um, now we need to episode of episodes. So this is the episodes we fetched. Now we need to construct the episodes, right? So this is gonna be the documents for the current episodes. Okay, we don't need this ID here. So we actually I'm going to create a new object called episode, right? And uh, the ID is gonna go over here, because we're going to store the episodes in the Gatsby. And uh, we basically we content digest is just going to be episode name, because we don't care about that. And let's call it episode in this case, right? And then so this is going to be we're going to drop the data bit because we're literally just going to return the data itself, right? So I'm going to save that. So we're going to return data file name episode new. Yeah, okay, you know, what? let's just leave the data as is, as we already had it basically, right? And um, right, so let me just say const links, let's do it like this. I'm going to split this a bit. So we're going to generate the links array, right? We're going to push them into our push into um, array of all links used for searching, right? And then we're going to create new episodes uh, and use links inside of it. So the idea is that we're going to have instead of having the bunch of episodes, sorry, the bunch of links, uh, as we have right now, which means we have to like crawl through them and find the episodes, and properly, you know, deduce the episode names and URLs and dates, which is annoying. Uh, instead of that, uh, we actually are going to have data over here on the episodes, so we're going to have a bunch of episodes that nest the links because we literally don't use the links anywhere as a standalone thing aside from the search, which we're going to grab from the JSON. Right, so this is going to be episode name, URL, date, and then we're going to have links. And it's just going to be links, basically, right? Um, now, the thing is, we don't actually need them here. Uh, the file name should also be only this. So it sort of should only be here. Right, so documents literally can be just left as documents, right? So the links is going to be documents, we don't need to modify them. And we only need to modify that over here. So actually, we don't need to store that rather than we just say, okay, we're going to push that into array. Um, but we also need to Yeah, so we're going to modify that we don't care about file name, if I remember correctly, let me just recheck how we use this search. I think we only relied, um, let me think. So we relied on data URLs and title, right? So this is literally the two things that we need. But both of them are inside of this data that is processed from the markdown. Now we did use something else to render them. So we used title, we used category, and we used URL. So episode name URL and URLs. Okay, so we need four fields. URLs comes from the data. Um, title comes from the data category comes from the data. So episode URL and episode name are the only two things that we have to add here. I just want to keep that uh, document as lean as possible. Because you know, the web worker, even though it will be done in the background, will still have to fetch the thing and uh, process it. Okay, uh, let's call it new episode because there was some shadowing going on around and we're going to say okay, oh, bleh, not here. No, 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 no new episode. That's correct. I'm going to say all episodes push new episodes, right? So we're just going to push it to the collection. And then we're going to go here. Um, so this is going to be import nodes to Gatsby. And this one is going to be save JSON used for search, right? So this is exactly what we're doing. And then 
importing nodes for Gatsby is going to be done from all episodes. And yeah, exactly, exactly the same pattern, essentially, right? So in theory, if I run the build now, it should work, but it should actually first fail and tell us that, hey, your, uh, your GraphQL queries no longer make sense, right? Because we no longer have all links. Okay, there's our pre processing. I probably should enable some sort of a client side caching for this because we are we are grabbing the GitHub API every time we run build, which is I, I mean, again, you know, it's going to be okay on CI because it's going to be weekly builds, but while developing, not exactly nice. But anyway, so it should fail the build now if I understand correctly, right? And once it fails it, no, it actually didn't fail. Maybe the that's that's into wait a second, it should. It still renders everything. Wait, did I create the other nodes too? What am I missing? So Oh, I guess this is just got that I forgot to kill the cache, right? Yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> this is likely gonna break now. Okay, so it just was cached and was uh, still working with the previous data dump, which exact contained the exact structure that we used before, which is why it successfully built there we go. Now it complains about the queries. So as you expect, so we no longer have links in the GraphQL backend. So it says, okay, I cannot actually render any links because we don't have them. If I try to load the page, we're going to see the error here, which is exactly what we expect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into GraphQL here. And uh, yeah, instead of doing that, because this is no longer needed, let me just zoom in a bit for you. Uh, so we now have all episode, right? Um, why are you doing this? I don't need that. All episode edges notes ID. So if we do that, we should have like, yeah, 80 something of them 85. There we go. Perfect. And then we got the data. And then we can actually get the links by category. Cool. So we actually got the episodes, right? And now that we have the episode date. So if I remove the links from here, what we can actually do is we can very easily why are you still rendering the links go away? So what we could do is we could easily sort them by the date and get the latest episode in just one query instead of doing like, you know, 100 of them. So that is a lot more efficient. Uh, hey, Grishrock, welcome to the stream. Long time no see mate. All right, let's go back into the um, documents. And let's first build our index page, which gets the latest uh, episode, right? So here, instead of this, we're going to have all episodes which is going to be sort by date episode data episode date, which is exactly the same descending limit one, this is the change year and uh, we're going to get ID, we're going to get episode name. And then here, instead of getting category title URLs and URL sets from the episode itself, we're going to say we want to links, which is nested and get this right. And I'm going to for now, I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to command this out. And just to see that we actually get the structure we uh, expect, I'm just gonna do JSON stringify this and just, you know, actually see that, okay, this is what we want. So we don't need that. We don't need, like the cool thing about that is that we literally don't need all of those modifications on the, on the runtime anymore, right? So edges and actually if we do this, we should get the first episode. And that's literally all we want, which is pretty damn good. Right, so we save that so we now should see. Uh, okay, all links, all links, what is this? Where is this coming from Document Field all link on type query, where am I trying to run all link? I don't think I have all link anymore. But I guess I maybe do somewhere. Okay, fail to compile. Oh, Myamala projects, website components. Oh, search, right. We got the search rendering, which tries to run the query too, which I guess, um, so where was the search? Let me just disable it for now. I think it was in the header, right? Yep, there we go. So I'm just gonna comment out the search for now because it still does the old query and we just wanna see the homepage render. Um, why are you not what? I did save it, right? So all query on blah, 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 component search J. Yeah, okay. What are you what is happening right now? Okay, you know what I can just Oh, I guess because it's statically compiled. So it's going to do it anyway. Um, I can do I can just command 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 this out, right? And just say that, okay, const search 
search data is basically empty array. There you go. You're going to search over nothing. Okay, what is happening right now? File GraphQL requests, all links. Like, okay, you know what, I'm just going to kill this, because we don't really care about that at the moment. Queries, yeah, okay, okay, you know what, I'm not even using you anymore. So I'm just going to comment you out as well. Come on, just render the bloody homepage. All episodes, edges, wait a second. So all episodes, am I? Oh, all episodes. Is that why you complaining about that? I mistyped it. And okay, nearly there. So this is coming from episodes list. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess basically it just change it to that. And come on now, all link on query in template episode. So this is the specific episode again. Okay. Oh boy, there we go. Come on. Right group. Okay, so we're grouping, we don't need to group anything here anymore. Or actually we do, but we need to do this by link category, I think like this. Oh, okay, it even suggests this is pretty neat. Like, okay. <laughs> Unknown field category on type episode data. God damn it. Come on now. Um, yeah, right. So we need to actually take those. Is that clear? Literally all the changes would have to do just take this. Okay, no, 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 we need just a category. So the file name stays, we take this and say, okay, links. Save this. Okay, can I read property edges of undefined? I'm guessing I screwed up somewhere. Edges all episode. Oh, right, because it's all episodes. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so now we got rendered. So we get our latest episode, which is super nice. And now it's just one data structure instead of 100 that we have to deduce, right, which is great. Um, now we just need to tweak our episode component, which by the way, becomes 20 times simpler, uh, because literally, we just instead of doing all of that, we just say render our episode and we say data equal episode, right? Because this is all we need to do. Now, okay, uh, it's for some reason kill all right, because it removes the unused imports from components episodes, so we import it back. There we go. Okay, um, now that's gonna fail, obviously, because the episode right now uses the old data structure. So we are going to say, okay, as the data, and the data is going to be destructed into our uh, things such as episode name, episode date, right? And then we're going to have links. So this is going to be episode name. This is going to be episode date. Uh, no, sorry, date. And then, then we're going to have to group the links anyway. So maybe we restructure them again and just group them by default. So groups is not defined, obviously. Okay, group lists. Yeah, so I guess groups find value. Okay, so we need to take the links we have and group them by the group name. Right? Okay, I think that should be sufficient by just saying, okay, groups is gonna be Lodash, I'm just gonna import Lodash here. Right, so since we already have the Lodash here, and uh, it's gonna be Lodash group by, uh, we're gonna group links by what are we gonna group links by? What was the property? Um, where is the query by the category? There we go. Okay. So I think, but yeah, okay, so instead of that, it's gonna be just groups from group name. Group name. Yes, yeah, so this is gonna be group name group name. Links is gonna be I mean, we literally just do that, right? I don't why do I, I don't even need Yeah, I do need to filter because we might not have the given category here. Okay, invalid date. I guess I screwed something up somewhere. Um, oh, no, yes, data. Oh, right. Okay. So because it's actually data data, which is ugly. So let's go episodes data. So it's going to be a bit more destruction here, the construction, and then we're going to have this as episode. It's a bit more. Okay, can I read property episode name of undefined. So we got episode episode, right? Um, is it note data? 
Okay, wait a second. Is it gonna be? Ugh, this, I I freaking hate those nested things. Like the thing is, we don't really care about all the other stuff in it, right? So we might as well say it's gonna be episode nodes data here. And I guess just call it data again, which means we can destruct uh, deconstruct it like this, right? Okay, uh, ID of undefined. So what is episodes? Okay, so now we need to fix the sections, um, which is the next step. So we get the name and we get the links, which is fine. Links is actually no longer have the node, which is great for us because it's just gonna be the data for the link itself, which means that we're gonna get the URLs and title from here. And I'm just gonna use the URLs over here because it's gonna be unique enough, at least within one episode context to just render it. So our rendering became like two times easier. There we go. It works. We got the correct ordering. We got the episode title and everything. So this works perfectly fine. That is actually uh, significantly simplifies everything we basically did here. So what is what did I remove from here? I'm curious because it says there's something killed, right? Get div source uh, pages index. So what did I remove? Lodash. All right, because we did all the pre-processing. Correct. Okay, cool. So we fixed the index page episode section. Yeah, we did that. Searches we're going to get to after we're done with that. We don't care about the header for now. So now we need to fix the episode list, right? Um, so the cool thing here is that to get the list of episodes, uh, what we need is literally just get episode name, URL, and... I guess date and then order it by date, right? So episode URL name, episodes. So yeah, I'm just gonna copy this query because that's literally all we want. And then we need to sort it. I guess I'm just gonna copy this from here and kill the limit from there, right? So we just, we don't need limits. We just do that. And uh, all episodes, edges of undefined. Okay, so we need to tweak the deconstruction here. All episodes, edges, um, we're gonna call them episodes. And we literally don't need that anymore, which is freaking great. Right, uh, so we got the episodes, we are sort, oh, I'm sorting them by number now, which I mean, I guess if I sort by date, I no longer have to do that, which again is great, because we no longer have to care about that. Uh, but we're gonna have to change this, which is gonna be dot data. And this is gonna be we can just do episode ID, right? Data, or is it nodes data, I think, right? Nodes data and nodes dot ID. I think that should, yep, there we go. So it's automatically sorted on compilation, no longer any client side processing, which is great. Now we just need to fix the episode page. Again, just look how much it's simplified. Like simple change in the data structure makes the websites 10 times easier to manage. Okay, so what do we need to do here? We say all episode filter so that data episode URL is equal. So this actually stays the same, right? We no longer need to group anything. So we can actually say, uh, so how many do I kill? Two, is that correct? No, that's not correct, three. No, that's still not correct. Nope. Okay, maybe that's too much. Wait a second, I killed one. Okay, so that's just one, that's too much. Save that. All right, so we got um, this stuff, but we need to tweak the data a bit. No, I already tweaked that. Okay, cool, so they're actually supposed to be correct. Um, hey, Archon, welcome to the stream. All right, we got, yeah, page of undefined, so I guess the data, okay, all, episodes uh, and then it's going to be edges and it, we're going to take the first one is going to be our episode right we no longer need that again is going to simplify our rendering significantly so in this case data is going to be again episodes nodes data and that's literally all we have to pass which makes things a lot easier and i screwed something up can read property page of undefined. Where am I? What am I missing? Page of undefined. Where am I reading the page? There's a page, page of undefined. Uh, path. Okay, that's not it. This seems like it should work. I should also probably get the URL here, right? 
Can I read page of undefined cache root? Where's my stack trace? Um, no, thank you very much. So where is this coming from? <laughs> App.js 40. That is navigator. No, okay, this is service worker. This is not what we want. Where is this index.js consumer? Okay, this is React Error Boundaries. This is not what we want. Where is this coming from? What is the page? Is you right? Oh, is it because the build failed? Right, okay, it's probably because the build failed itself, right? Because we, let me just recompile the whole thing. Because the templates should be pre-compiled, right? And since the query failed, it couldn't compile them. So obviously the page doesn't exist. I guess this is the problem right now. So, okay, come on. We got the uh, ingress. So once we've done this, the website is basically gonna be building faster than before. And it's a lot easier to reason about and manage. We can switch to doing the search. Uh, I also probably need to ignore the JSON that it produces. Okay, there is still an error somewhere. Uh, all link in Gatsby Node.js. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. I need to change the Gatsby Node config, right? Because we are compiling, yes, all episodes distinct on data episode URL. I, yeah, I think that should be fine. And then result errors, result data, all episodes distinct for each episode URL. Perfect. It seems like this should work. Okay. Are you working now? I guess I have to restart the build again. I really need to think about doing the client side cache for the build process because triggering the GitHub API so many times is a bit terrifying. Mm, okay, let me think how do I mean naive caching would be just to take this data we produce here and dump it into local JSON files. And then just, you know, clean it when we need to rebuild. Okay, so it looks like no errors during the build. That's a good sign. And we got our episode 85. So this renders as expected. Let's just try and click on like episode one seems to be working perfectly fine. This is great. Okay, so this works now. Index page also renders the last episode. It is a lot faster if I understand correctly, which is kind of great. Okay, cool. Now, uh, now we're coming. So, okay, let me first commit. Uh, no, you know, yeah, I guess I could commit that. Let's just go ahead and commit that. Uh, first of all, let's see. So it should have produced the JSON file in the static folder, right? Yeah, there we go. So we got the JSON, links JSON, which we need to actually ignore search JSON um, generated search uh, generated the search JSON file. So this is gonna be static slash links dot JSON is what we want to ignore. Okay, Git adds just to double check looks good. Git commit update data structure to make it easier to query um, episodes and nested links. Right, sign the commits. Okay. Now we're coming to the interesting bits, this search. So we're, as I said, you know, we have the search and it kind of works right now. But the problem is, is it's very slow, right? So um, instead of doing search in the front end itself in the our react component, we are actually going to rewrite this handle search function to work with a service worker. Uh, sorry, not a server. God, why am I always saying server web worker is what I want to say. So we don't longer need this query here at all, right? And we no longer need this stuff here at all. We no longer need search data. And our fuse thing is going to go into a new file. So I'm just going to copy it here. Uh, we still need this input value. We still need set result zero. We do copy this thing into the new file. Uh, we still need to get the found results somehow, right? So this is still, yes, we're gonna turn this into a sync and I'm gonna say, okay, so we got found is gonna be await get results. So somehow we get results from our input, right? Um, okay, so now we need to actually define this get result function and then we would need to tweak the rendering of the results a bit, but that's a simpler question. We also need this fuse over here and we need this fuse library over here as well. All right, and uh, oh, don't save that yet. Save this. 
And then I'm gonna just say, okay, so we got this get results function, which is a sync. And for now it just returns, and uh, come on, return an empty array. So we mock the search basically, right? Which means that uh, if I go ahead here and search, well, we literally should not see anything, which is exactly what you would expect. Okay, now we need to tweak Gatsby to work with uh, Web Worker. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for Gatsby Web Worker, which I am assuming, yes, there was an issue that I remember looking at, but I think they've actually had a plugin for it recently. So let's go into plugins and search for Worker. There you go, there's a Gatsby plugin Workerize, which is exactly what we need. So Workerize Loader is an amazing uh, tiny utility for web workers. And we're gonna use that, which is just great. So we can just do that, right? And uh, copy, stop our build, then install the Gatsby plugin Workerize. I assume we need to add it into plugins, there we go. So where is our Gatsby uh, config? While it's installing, we're gonna add it, I guess, to the end because it doesn't really matter that much. Save it. Okay, so we added, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna use backticks for consistency because everything else is with backticks. Okay, so we got, uh, maybe we should put it in the beginning. I guess that makes more sense, right? So, okay, we got the source, we got the worker eyes. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we added the plugin. Uh, now, how do I use it? Uh, okay, I just create search.worker.js. That sounds perfect. So we got our components, and I guess I'm just going to create a search.worker.js over here and export a sync. So I just export a function and then I import it. Okay, cool. That's That makes it very easy. All right, so we got, we don't longer need this memo because this will be created immediately as the worker executes, right? Oh no, we actually can do that. So this is one of the caveats because we don't have, no, we have to load the search data first, right? So we are gonna run, we're gonna have a need function. It's gonna be a sync and then we're gonna have exports um, I guess, yeah, let's just export function search. It's gonna have inputs and it's basically gonna do this and return found, right? So that's basically all our function has to do. The problem is this search data, which is, um, so we got the fuse options. We're gonna say let fuse, I guess, hmm. Here I'm, I'm thinking what, what would be the best way to actually uh, structure that. So we need to basically first fetch the data, right? So which is gonna be, okay, con search data is gonna be await fetch um, slash, uh, what was it? Links JSON is what we named it, right? And it's gonna be, um, come on, r.json. So we're gonna fetch it, convert it to JSON. After that, we can create fuse and now we need to actually store, I guess, a reference, like local reference to it. So I'm just gonna do that. And we basically need to immediately invoke it as soon as we define it. Here's the deal though. So we need to, I guess, hmm. how do I, I mean, I guess it should be fine. So nobody would be as fast as to try and search Okay, you know what, let's just go naive way for now and then tweak it because I don't like the fact that, you know, the user might be searching before the data loads. So we need to add some additional stuff over there. Okay, so we got the search worker. We need to, okay, we don't need that anymore. We can go to search and we can say, okay, import search worker from, well, that is gonna be this search worker JS, right? And then here is gonna be a wait search worker dot, I, I assume it's gonna be search worker dot. Uh, okay, so we actually need to instantiate it, but only on the client side, got it. And then search worker search. Okay, so it's a promise. We can basically use a wait search worker search. This is gonna be inputs. So we are gonna, yeah, we're gonna pass the input there. Did I call it search or did I call it something else? I did call it search. Okay, good. Const results is gonna be a wait. Yes, and then we're gonna say re return results, right? Okay, 
So in theory, uh, is our build even even? Oh, we don't even have the build running yet. So let's let's start a build. So in theory, now if that compiles correctly without errors, we should get a new web worker running in the background that fetches the JSON file for us and then allows us searching over it, right? Using the fuse library, which means that uh, it's gonna be a sync, it's gonna be a lot snappier than what we had before. And it's no longer gotta block the re-rendering from the React side, which is great. Uh, now the caveat is of course, since it's a sync, we need to add some sort of a loading indicator because otherwise the user would think, you know, in the cases when the JSON, for example, is not still loaded, the user would think that the uh, search doesn't work. All right, cool. So we got the thing compile. Let's fire up the dev tools. I guess let me just increase the size of them. So come on now. There we go. Um, now, where is my workers? Hell, if I remember where to look at them. So there's the service workers, I think. Uh, okay, so there's our worker and it actually fetched the JSON. So theoretically, it should actually work, right? Let's just go ahead and try. Um, React. Whoops, and it kind of works, I guess, but I uh, refuse to create worker from because it violates the content security policy worker source. No, wait, so it didn't create a worker. Oh, interesting. Okay, so why did it refuse to create a worker? Um, obviously we don't need that. So problem with CSP worker source, none. Okay, yeah, so what is the... Uh, you should be able to fix this by changing worker source directive to your own URL. Um, I mean, it's great and all, but that doesn't help me in this case. Am I am I missing something? New worker. So we got this use ref. We, okay, we don't care about this. We only instantiate it once. Uh, God's been worker eyes. Is that like, does it require the full path here or something? Uh, no, doesn't seem so. Hmm. Interesting. So why are you ignore how to set worker? Okay. Um, this is worker is loader. So yeah, I mean, let's let's search for the Gatsby specific issue. Um, Gatsby may refuse to create a worker directive. Yeah, let's, wait, uh, that was too much. But um, okay, refuse to create a worker. I think I'll just go with that maybe. Uh, refused, no, web worker support, no. Uh, okay, there's the using web workers in Gatsby project. So is that, so this is use worker as loader, but this seems to be like a manual config for the web pack. I guess this is what the plugin does. The question is uh, path worker. Is it like literally has to be, no, that, that couldn't be the case, right? So why, why are you? Used to create the worker because it violates the contents. Yeah, okay. There's a bootstrap. So why are you refusing to create the worker? Worker source none. Um, is there, okay, wait a second. There's the workerized loader. Is there options in line true? Can, is there an option for this plugin as well? There's the GitHub for it. Uh, no, that's not for it, so. There we go, view on GitHub. I'm assuming there's a way to pass it some sort of a flag that would basically inline it or something that would make it easier for us. And source doesn't have any tests or examples, which is, okay, so what is in the source here? Um, we got Node.js, right? So this is, yeah, so it's essentially just config get config options, options name regex, Loader workerize options. So it does take option. No, it doesn't allow extending options either. Oh boy. Okay. So what am I missing? Why doesn't it work? Um, uh, refuse to create a worker. Let's try workerize loader. Refuse to create worker. There is probably an issue related to that that is easy to resolve. And I'm just refused. I don't want is open. It's likely closed. There is no refuse to create worker. Okay, interesting. Does anyone in the chat knows what the problem is? It my, Ad, I don't know. Okay, adblock is disabled, UMetrics is disabled. So that should not be the problem. 
just violates the content security policy worker source known. Okay, so it is a separate file, right? So it should, seems like it should work. I am not sure what is going on here. Let's see, so we got this, we got yes, new search worker. We inst is that because I'm triggering it too early? Is that the thing? So let's try, let's try um, instantiating it using the recipe that they have here in the plugin. Maybe that will help. So yeah, just use the ref. Okay, use effects. Uh, yeah, no, we don't need the use effect. So that's the worker. We use the ref, get search worker. Okay. And then I guess we just, instead of doing this, we could do this in line, right? Call it found here. Search worker. I guess, yeah, get search worker is what we're gonna call here. And um, yeah, I need to import user f from React. Da -da -da. Okay, we don't need that anymore. Okay, that's a bit more concise. Let's see if that actually works. Um, refresh that. Okay, no longer, I mean, we no longer have any messages because we're no longer instantiated, right? So, and search of undivided, wait, 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 fuse, why is it? Okay, so it actually started working, but then throwed an error. Did it, why didn't import, oh, but why the fuse should be, okay, wait a second, console log, I needed fuse. Is that error message just bollocks and actually is not uh, basically saying anything? So it doesn't need fuse, oh, wait a second. Okay, so let me roll back all the changes we did here because I'm confused right now. So it seems to be working, but it's just fuse is no longer initiated, instantiated, I guess. Uh, no, okay, that's too much. Okay, this is what we want, right? There we go. Okay, uh, reload that. Right, so even though there is an error for some reason, it actually still works and, and is properly instantiated, right? So, right, so what is happening? Um, console log, use. So let's see, search use input. Let's see. Okay. Does that work? React. Yes, it does. And it does. It, it wait, it does work actually. Um, okay, I'm very confused right now. But if it works, I'm totally fine with that. So got get results console, uh, console log, let's log the results over here. Right, so results here are empty. Okay, console log, worker found. Let's see what we got here. Right, they are empty as well. So why are they empty? Am I initializing this wrong console log? Oh, right, I know what's the problem. I'm an idiot. Okay, it's my own fault because we have the data shape is now different, right? So we're we're trying to index the fields that don't exist, which which is exactly why it's empty. God damn it. It was, um, okay, there we go. There we go, now it works. Okay, so now we actually get the proper results. This now works. Okay, that was a lot of wasted time. Right, so instead of getting all of that, we now get uh, just items. And it's gonna. I'm just gonna use the URLs as the key here, which means we no longer have this node data. We don't need it because it doesn't exist. It means I can just save that, reload this, and theoretically, there we go. Um, React hooks. Yep, it is now very snappy, very fast. Um, I guess we don't even need the search indicator because it seems to be pretty. And if I do this, it still is very responsive and nothing is actually lagging. Cool. Now what we want to do is we, we might want to debounce the search so that it doesn't execute on literally every key press. Um, is there a use debounce hook or something? React hook debounce. Uh, wait a sec, we're using Lodash already, right? So we can just go with that. Uh, there we go. So we got this debounce function. Wait, okay, so where is an example? Uh, yeah, so we can just say 
Mm, how do I wrap this? I mean, you know what? For now, it's fine. Like, it doesn't really matter because it's all in memory and it's all in worker thread and it's not that large anyway, right? So it actually works as expected. But, oh, it actually doesn't. So if I like overload it and then raise it, we will not see. Yeah, so we do need the debouncing. Use debounce. So we need the react use debounce hook. I'm just gonna copy the source code from here. It's likely somewhere here. It's likely very simple. I just am too lazy to think about that myself. Just gonna grab the code and say, okay, so we're gonna have, let's create a util folder and just gonna create use debounce.js taken from um, here. Okay. Export function use debounce value delay. So, okay, we need to import, uh, let me think. React, no wait, I just need, I just need use state, right? And use effect. Okay, uh, use effect set debounced value. That is, no, that doesn't look correct. Is it? Is that the correct hook? What I wanna do is I wanna debounce the setting of the value, which should happen after, where is it used? Uh, debounce search time, searching results, search term, debounce search term, and then, oh, okay. So then use use effect for searching. So we just do that. Yeah, okay. Debounce search term, and then on change set search term. Okay, so basically we use the set search term, we derive the debounce term from it. Uh, yeah, I guess that's an option. So let's go with that. Why not? Okay. So we're gonna import from um, util use debounce, debounce over here. So const uh, search input set search input use state empty. Now we're gonna have debounced search is gonna be use debounce is gonna be search input and then we're gonna yeah let's put 750 milliseconds that usually works best and then essentially use state we're gonna trigger state change on debounce search and what it's gonna do is it's just gonna do this but we actually can just do it like this, right? Found and set results and we're basically done. Okay, this should be debound search. And we no longer need that. Oh no, we do need that because, uh, right, okay, if input, so we don't, no, we do need to do this set search input to input. I guess we just set it, whoops. And here if debounce search length, just gonna return. So we don't wanna search on empty strings because this doesn't make sense for us. Right, uh, we do this and then here we just, yeah, no, we don't need that. We just literally need to do this, right? So this looks fine. Uh, build compiles. Okay, let's try that. So theoretically, if I now go ahead and do this all the way, blah, 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 then go like react and then kill it and then do this and then type react, we should only see the react results, which doesn't really work for some reason. Interesting. Why it doesn't work? That's a really good question. Oh, right. Because, right, because... Um, value search input e target value set search input input yeah so this is exactly what we want okay save that reload um nope nothing happens why nothing happens what is the use debounce so we got the value we got the delay right so we put the search input over here right so we 
yes, so we got the debounced value. We use effect, value delay, that's fine. Set timeouts, clear timeouts. Okay, so this, yeah, this should, seems like it should theoretically work fine. What am I missing? Uh, let me just do this, console log run search debound search okay let's see that uh do we actually see anything in there it does not even execute the effects so i guess the hook is god damn it why do you have to be like this right uh, i guess we're gonna have to come up with a better solution than that so yeah the idea is that um we actually don't need to store the search input. We just need to simplify the, okay, let me just roll back the whole damn thing. This is mildly annoying, but you know what, it's fine. Okay, we yes, kill that. So this is our old source code, right? Now what we need to happen is if it's zero, then we just forget about it. Otherwise we need to say that, okay, const uh, debounce ref, we're gonna use ref here. And then we're gonna say, okay, if there is a debounce ref, we're gonna clear timeout, debounce ref current, right? So we're just gonna wipe the timeout if it exists. If there is no timeout or if it was cleared, we're just gonna say debounce ref current set timeout. After the timeout is done, we're gonna execute a sync function that is gonna do exactly this, right? And it's gonna be 750 milliseconds. That is literally all we want. And we can kill this so it doesn't have to be a sync over here. I think that's, yeah, so that <laughs> taking that hook was a bit of an overkill. And okay, now it works. And if I just go crazy with stuff and blah, 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 um, okay, so it still, okay, so it actually should clear this timeout on change not after we reset the search. So this should be like this, right? So because then it will clear it correctly when we go like, okay, so we got react, right? I'm gonna go crazy, kill it, da -da -dum, erase, no more results, perfect. Right, so this works. Um, react hooks, the bounds, yeah, okay, designer, Works, okay, but um, like, okay, maybe 500 is a bit too much or maybe not, but we do need to show some sort of a loading indicator, I guess, right? Um, do we, we, did, we didn't actually use any loading indicators. Um, now here's the question. Does Tailwind actually has anything like this? Um, Tailwind CSS, loading, uh, leading, no, 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 none of this is useful. Yeah, and CSS loading. I mean, I guess we could just like drag. To, yeah, oh, there's a tailwind spinner. Okay. What does this do? Spinner require. Okay. Um, maybe it would be easier to drag in something like loader CSS. Uh, what was it? Pure loading. What was it? Loading IO. I don't remember. No, this is the one. No, they check it out on GitHub. It was there was one that was like, maybe we could. You know what, there's the React loaders. I remember there was like a nice one somewhere, but hell if I remember the name for it. Uh, semantic UI, no, that's, I don't need the whole UI just for the loaders. Okay, so this is a wrapper for loader CSS, which seems kind of useless if you have to install them separately anyway. So what about this one? This is lightweight wrapper around loader CSS and you still have to install loader CSS. Okay, cool. Um, okay, now there's the loader CSS. So I guess maybe we just drag in the loader CSS themselves. It would be cool to have it like an SVG version that doesn't have external dependencies. Uh, okay, this one seems actually to be it. So let's check the source code real quick. So let's say we have the spin that includes, yeah, okay. So it's styled components includes everything we want. So this is exactly what we want. Right, um, yarn adds react css loaders and then we're gonna bar loader so what kind of loaders do we have we can just take spin loader right okay and i guess i should probably copy this from here and uh, paste it 
inside this search. Okay. Um, right, so we need spin loader. And I'm just gonna put it in here. Are we no, we're not running yarn start. So in theory, that basically should render the loader in our or next to our search bar, actually, and then we can just tweak the CSS a bit to make it appear where we want uh, when the search happens. And that's basically it. Did I already told you your voice is pretty relaxing? No, you have not told this to me. I is really interesting to hear from me because I'm not a huge fan of my voice, to be honest. <laughs> I personally don't think my voice is any good. Like it's, you know, it's okay. I don't hate it, but it's like, yeah. Okay, um, coming back to this. So come on, compile now. There we go. So where's my, holy shit, that's a big load. <laughs> okay, then that is a bit of an overkill. So, right. So this is now, this is the loader, um, size 10. I guess it has like size, where's the, there's the thing. Color size duration. Okay, so we can tweak size and say that size is gonna be I uh, like I don't know five. That's still big. That's still large as hell. Uh, one. Okay, that's better. Um, doesn't seem to be. Why is there so much stuff around it? <laughs> well, okay, this sizing is a bit wonky but okay you know what before after why is there so we can i guess we can tweak it so there's the margin that is really big uh, i hope you can override styling on them maybe we just drag in the loaders because this seems like it's we're gonna take longer to just basically style this thing rather than drag in the CSS. Uh, what's yarn uninstall uh come on remove there we go. Oh, okay. Um, I heard a streamer who has my voice. I hate him. <laughs> that would probably what happen if I would meet or see a streamer online that has my voice. I like, I cannot listen to myself. Okay. Um, right. So let's just go with loader CSS. You know what? That sounds like a better idea. It's gonna be way more customizable. Okay. My girlfriend said that multiple times about, yeah, my wife also tells that the, you know, she likes my voice, but again, I, I, I get, it's the same situation. She hates her voice. I like her voice, but yeah, it's like, I think there's very little number of people who actually like their own voice, amusingly enough. <laughs> okay, um, let me think. So we are gonna take loader. Let's, where's this spinning one? Some Something very simple. All of those are really maybe, Maybe hey, hey, like this one. Okay, so I just, yeah, copy that. It is HTML, copy that. We'll create a new component, call it a loader JS. Um, okay, export default. Just do that, save it. Um, class name, class name here. Right, so we can actually replace all those divs with this. There we go. Okay, and we need to import. I guess we can just import it at the top level in the layout, I believe. I think we did it in the layout, right? Yep, okay. Import loader, uh, what, no, loader CSS is what we want. And now, needs to change that. Import loader from, lo uh, come on now, loader. And loader over here, and I think that should be fine. Um, right, I need to start the build again. Uh, you see, team, you have a nice voice, not too loud and not too quiet. 1010 would hear you again. <laughs> well, thanks, mate. Really happy to hear that. <laughs> okay, uh, where is our build? Come on, we just need to add this loader, and we're basically done for today. And we're actually almost done with the website. So on, once we've, we're done with that, uh, all we have to do is to add the social links. And I, I was thinking maybe we should embed the YouTube videos as well. Um, since, you know, it's still links for the podcast. Since it might be actually good with SEO this time around. Um, React is not defined, right? I forgot to import React over here. React from React. There we go. Come on now. 
Okay, cool. Uh, it is a bit big, but we're gonna fix that in a second. Now then, we got the loader. I guess, yeah, I guess we could actually position it where it is right now, right? So it could be before the, um, well, it is actually not where I sh want it to be, but wait a second. So we got, I want it to be over here, right? Before the input, which would put it like in a okay-ish position here. Now, how do I properly, so we got the loader, we got the bullets. I mean, white color is fine. Now the problem is the ADX, hey, 20 x Nope, that doesn't, how do I, okay, what is, is that top left? Okay, so this is the relative position with 20 VX, hey, 20 VX. That doesn't help either. How do I scale that thing? I forgot. <laughs> Um, right. Uh, ta -da 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 -da. Oh, right. There we go. This is what I want to do, right? Uh, we just want to do the CSS transform. This, like, I always forgot forgetting that this thing actually exists and you can just do that, right? Now we just need to position the damn thing. Um, okay, so this uses relative positioning. I even need that. No, I don't need that, right? So this seems to be working fine without it. And this is coming from ball spin fade loader. And this does it. This one doesn't have anything. So position. Okay, you know what? Display flex, right? Um, this probably also goes display flex. Just uh, no, nope, justify contents. No, not justify align content, align items. Okay, align items center. We need that, and we need. Oh boy, what do we need here? Uh, we need um, align items, and I think it's justify content, right? Space evenly. Uh, is it not just long enough? Oh yeah, okay. So it's actually too small, and width is gonna be. I guess we need to put the loader outside of our eh, man. Okay, this is a bit of a pain in ass. I mean, I guess I could just pat it a bit. Ugh, there, come on. Okay, let me think for a second. So let me reload that. Um, right uh, here, we got our loader. I'm just gonna say the style here is. Um, no, you know what? I'm not gonna say the style here is. We're gonna we we already have proper CSS, so let's just use it. Loader is going to be, where was the transform 0.4? Uh, no, no, what? No, not outside, inside that. There we go. Reload that. Come on now, recompile. Oh, I guess it crashed the first time, right? Okay, there we go. That's kind of kind of what we want, but not quite. Now, position app uh, fixed, I guess. Top 10px left. No. Right, okay, so this is fixed. I think it's static is relative. Whoops. I'm always forgetting how do you properly position that stuff. What? No. Static. Yes, there we go. So left minus third no. God damn it. Why am I so bad at CSS? <laughs> um right, so let me think. What if I just what if I Put the loader if i put the loader outside so we actually do this so i'm gonna do the react fragment here and do okay we're getting there so this is getting somewhere <laughs> okay and uh, i guess if we now say that the loader actually has some proper width right because right now it's just like hey this thing scales there we go that's exactly what we want um Okay, refresh that, come on, recompile, come on. Perfect, that looks perfect, but I think we actually wanna place it after the search because it makes more sense, right? And now we need to say, okay, const loading set loading and by default is gonna be use state false. 
So what we are gonna do is we are gonna say, okay, set loading true, right? And set loading false. No, we actually don't wanna, like if I were gonna set it like this is gonna re-render re unnecessarily when we reset that. So we're gonna do is set it here. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna set it to false, right? So this is exactly what we want. Okay, uh, whoops. Okay, that does not, that looks actually worse than it was before. So I'm gonna <laughs> move it back. You know what? It's not bad if it's in front of it. Yeah, that looks a lot better. And now we just need to say, okay, loading and uh, whoops, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm so bad I could mistype the word loading. Okay, cool. So we got this and then just go react and we got results. Cool. And if I do like this, blah, 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 and it still only shows the last result, which is exactly what we want. Perfect. And this still works. Cool. So we are, yeah, we're like 95% done with the website, which is great. And the search is now completely done in the background via web worker and with some nice loading animations, which is also great. Okay, I'm gonna add that. So what did we workerize loader? So this is the service worker. This is our adjustments. And what did I add to the, so this is the plugin and the loader. Yeah, okay, looks, looks great, okay. Move search into web worker, bleh, worker to make it a sync. Ta-da. Okay, come on now. I, I can type my password sometimes. Right. Um, that's basically it for today's stream. So if you guys have any questions or suggestions, feel free to throw them into the chat right now. Um, if not, then we can just wrap this here and uh, yeah then finish it next time. So basically there's a few tiny things left to do. Uh, we need to, well, make the home page a bit more like home page and uh, maybe tweak the episode list a bit. Other than that, we just need to set up the CI and we're actually damn done. The new, I'm really liking how the new website is coming along. This has been quite nice. I mean, I, I love Gatsby at this point. <laughs> All right. Well, it doesn't seem like there's any more questions or suggestions. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream and I see you next time. Bye.